All right, what's going on YouTube? Um, I know this is not really the topic of the day. You know, I know everyone is speaking on Manny Pacquiao and his homophobic uh, comments on gays. And, you know, I'm not doing a video on that. So don't ask because I really don't care. That's like celebrity jump drama. That it, it's a boxer, but it has nothing to do with boxing. So I, I really don't care to speak on that. But uh, I wanted to do this video because... I like doing videos and giving people a different look on things and just not going with the public and just jumping on what everybody else says, you know. Um, I like doing that because when Billy Joe Saunders first came out and said that he wanted 18 months before fighting Golovkin and then he tried to outprice himself. I saw all of the backlash, um, the backlash, and I'm not saying he's not deserving of it. Well, you know what? He's not deserving of it. You know why? Because he's not doing anything different that any other boxer is doing today, okay? And I'll, I'll, I'll explain why, um, and I'm going to give you many examples of why. Um, I don't think he deserved the backlash that he got, okay? What I will say is that as a champion... Because now you're a champion. You beat Andy Lee. As a champion, you can't win the title and then go on with, I'm not ready. You know, um, you're a whole, you're a title holder now. You are a champion now. I'm not ready. We, we save that for the prospects. You know, the guys coming up. Not for a guy that wins a title, you know, against one of the best middleweights out there, Andy Lee. Um, but... I don't think he deserved the backlash that he got over all of the other fighters in boxing today. Um, now, my personal opinion on, 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 on Billy Joe Saunders. I honestly believe that Saunders might be the second best middleweight. He's one of the few fighters, or maybe even the only fighter, that I think can win rounds against Gennady Golovkin in middleweight. I know that might sound crazy. But that's just my personal opinion, you know. There's no way I can prove that unless they actually fight. But I think there's a talent gap between Saunders and a lot of other middleweights. And I think Saunders is really that good, you know. If he were to fight Golovkin, he would lose the fight, you know. Because at the end of the day, he doesn't have the stamina to go on all the way up into the mid. And he, he would have to fight at the same pace that he fights in round one. In order to survive against Golovkin. And he can't do that. He just doesn't have it. Alright. And I think he knows this as well. This is why he's openly saying. I'm not ready. But. I like the guy. You know. I really believe he is the second best. Um, it was no surprise to me. I actually picked him to beat Eubank Jr. Okay. I picked him to beat Andy Lee. You know. Even though a lot of. A lot of people thought Andy Lee was going to win this fight. And they already started saying they wanted to see the Jacobs fight. Um, I knew Saunders was going to win the fight. You know, I picked him to win. You know, I was a little 50-50 on it. It was a 50-50 fight because Lee has the experience. But I thought Saunders clearly had the talent. And I still think Saunders, I would probably pick Saunders to beat everybody that Golovkin has faced. And that's not... A knock on Golovkin because Golovkin has fought some good middleweights. It's just that I think Saunders is really that good. You know, I really think he's that good. And I might even pick him to beat Danny Jacobs. And I love Danny Jacobs. I've always been a fan of Danny Jacobs. But I think Saunders is that good. Now, as far as the, ba as far as the backlash that he got, I'm going to be a little bit more rational than everybody else. You know, I know... As far as YouTube, if you're part of YouTube, you know what's going on on YouTube. Everyone is, everything is on race and there's a lot of agendas going on. Um, you're not going to get that here, okay? Well, I, what I will say is that what happened with Billy Joe Saunders it's, is, is very common in boxing today. Um, he won a title. He won the IBF title. He beat David Lemieux, okay? David Lemieux win over Golovkin was a big deal, okay? And I'm going to tell you why. David Lemieux was a guy that beat 
all of the fighters that uh, Peter Quillen beat. You know, Peter Quillen was seen by many as to being the best middleweight outside of Golovkin, as far as resume is concerned. All right, I'm not including Canelo and Cotto because those guys were just pretty much posers at middleweight. Okay, they're not, you know, they're not real middleweights. You know, uh, they're both fighting at catch weights, and they're both, you know, Cotto's out here saying he's not a middleweight. Does he look like a middleweight? And Canelo's fighting at 155. These are not true middleweights. Okay, they are, but they don't want to. You know, they're not accepting the challenges as a middleweight. Okay, so we're not talking about them. Peter Quillen was seen to be. The best middleweight outside of Golovkin by many people. Okay, he was that guy that any Golovkin, uh, anyone that criticized Golovkin, they would say that he didn't fight a Peter Quillen. Okay, but David Lemieux fought the same opponents that Peter Quillen fought. Okay, David Lemieux beat Fernando Guerrero in better fashion than Peter Peter Quillen did. He beat Hassan Endam in better fashion than Peter Quillen did. He beat Gave Rosado in better fashion than Peter Quillen did. Yet, when he fights Golovkin and Golovkin destroys him, Golovkin gets no credit for beating a David Lemieux. People said that Lemieux was a bum. That it wasn't worth the pay-per-view fight. I mean, that's fine. That's your opinion. You know? But how can you gas Peter Quillen? How can you not say that David Lemieux wasn't on the same level at least as a Peter Quillen, you know, how can you argue that, you know, how can you even say that Peter Quillen was that much of a bigger win for Golovkin than anybody else that Golovkin beat, you know, some of the other fighters that Golovkin beat, all right, including David Lemieux, David Lemieux was a top guy at 160, he was a champion at 160, all right, and he's one of the few fighters today that actually won a title and went right into a unification match. He won a title against Hassan Endam and actually went right into fighting Golovkin. There's no one in boxing doing that today. Now, as far as going back to Billy Joe Saunders, Billy Joe Saunders beat Annie Lee, all right? I picked him to beat Lee. I, I want to make that clear because it, 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 I, I want you guys to know that I'm actually watching these guys fight. You know, I'm not just sitting here and basing stuff off everything else outside of them actually fighting and what's going on in the ring. He beats Andy Lee. After the fight is over, he says, 18 months, I'll fight Golovkin. You know, and then he tries to outprice, oh, I'll fight him now, but I need X amount of dollars, all of that good stuff. You know, the same tactics a lot of fighters use in order to get out of a fight. Okay, he's doing the same thing that everybody else is doing. Okay, he's the only difference between him is he openly says, I'm not ready for Golovkin. He said that over probably over a year ago now. All right, that he is not ready to fight Golovkin. All right, what other fighters today wins a title and goes right into a unification match? Okay, Deontay Wilder didn't do it, Kell Brook didn't do it. Okay, you got. I can name pretty much the whole sport. Terrence Crawford didn't do it. All right. Uh, Adrian Broner didn't do it. Danny Garcia's not doing it. You know. Uh, you know, I can't say Danny Garcia because he, he just won his title at 147. But a lot of these guys are not going straight into unification matches when they win their title. I mean, thank God Hopkins went over to HBO and for Kovalev at HBO. And I know that had to do with the Golden Boy deal. I understand that Golden Boy went back to HBO. They left Showtime. So Hopkins fought Kovalev on HBO because now they're back on HBO. So it's understandable. But that's the only reason why Kovalev has been able to get title fights and unify at least at least pick up three of the titles. You know? At least that's that's the reason why. That's the only reason why. But Stevenson didn't want to to unify. He's another fighter that didn't want to unify. I can go on and on and talk about t- uh, 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 champions that won a title and didn't want to unify the next match. So why is Saunders specifically getting all of the backlash when no other fighter 
in boxing today is unifying after winning a title. None of them are doing it. You know, Terrence Crawford could have did it. He could have fought Victor Postal next instead of fighting Hank Lundy. You know, um, why didn't he do it? You know, it's it's everybody could you could you can you can you could make the same because Victor Postal said I wanted to fight. I want to fight Terrence Crawford. You know, Canelo didn't do it. Canelo's another fighter that doesn't do it. You know, he wins a title, and instead of fighting Golovkin, he's fighting Amir Khan or welterweight. So why is Saunders being attacked? Now, I understand why Triple G fans would attack him. Because Triple G diehard fans want him to hurry up and become undisputed. So I understand. But why is he getting backlash from everyone? It doesn't make really make it doesn't make any sense. Because none of them, none of these fighters, none of these guys, there's always some fighter that Everyone is trying to avoid in the in their the division, you know. Stevenson should have fought Kovalev when he was already on HBO. Now I understand he says he he wants more money or whatever. That's cool, but that's what everybody else is saying. I need more money. I need more money because you think you're gonna get knocked out, and at least you want to get paid a good amount of money before getting knocked out, you know. But when Charles Martin wins a title, everybody wants to jump in the, ring, in the ring with him. Everybody wants a piece of him because he's the weaker champion. No, no, no one's asking for more money when it comes to guys like Charles Martin. No one's asking for more money for him. No one would price themselves out for Charles Martin because they feel like Charles Martin is an easy way to get the title. Everybody likes to jump on the weaker opponent in each division. Everybody in every division is doing it. Who's the easiest guy to beat to win a world title? That's what everyone is doing in every single weight division. All right. The only, you know, I mean, Golovkin just so happens to be one of the most avoidant boxing fighters today. The only guy in recent memory where I can say that none of the other title holders wanted to face him was Guillermo Riganow. You know, because he wanted to fight with Quig. He wanted to fight with Frampton. We He wanted to fight with, with, with Leo Santa Cruz. And these guys were straight up doing everything to avoid that guy. He's the only other one. You know, I mean, I can't even say it for Kovalev because at least Hopkins fought him. You know, Hopkins, 50-year-old Hopkins fought Kovalev. Fine, cool. You know, I mean, even though Stevenson is still ducking him, I mean, at least you had guys like a Pascal who was a top guy at 175 and jumped in the ring with Kovalev twice. At least he had the balls to do it. But in 160, no one wants to fight Golovkin. No one wants to fight Golovkin. And the reality is, let's be real. Let's keep it real. If you think Golovkin's some type of hype job, if you really believe that, you, you're going to think he's a hype job even if he were to beat a Saunders, even if he were to beat a Jacobs, even if he were to beat those guys, the same guys that's ducking him because Jacobs is right in line to fight him. Jacobs is right there. He's the WBA regular. If he wants to fight with Golovkin and he wants to press the fight with Golovkin, he can get that fight and Golovkin would have to defend his WBA title because that would have, he would have to be a mandatory at, at some point, you know? If, if Jacobs really wanted to fight, Golovkin would fight him because Jacobs is right there. So why is everybody getting on Saunders? You know, it, it makes no sense. And I, I don't know. You know, I'm just, I guess I'm just trying to just. I just, it's just, I, I just hate when it just is corny when everybody just jumps on a bandwagon of what everybody else is saying. We all want Triple G to unify. You know, we all want the fight. I want it myself. All right. I want Triple G to fight the other champs. But reality is these guys are ducking. They're ducking. You know, and Saunders don't have a better resume than some of the other fighters that Triple G already beat. Okay. Same thing with Danny Jacobs. All right. And Danny Jacobs don't even hold, he doesn't even hold a a a a a world a major title. You know, he's a he's the regular title holder. 
Okay, and Canelo, we already know the story with Canelo. Canelo should be getting the same backlash that Billy Joe Saunders was getting. All right. Danny Jacobs, love the guy. I was talking about Danny Jacobs way before you guys were talking about him. Okay. Danny Jacobs was always my dude. I'm biased towards him because he's from New York. Okay. I've been one of the Peter Quillen fight. I've been talking about this fight on this on this channel before everybody else was doing it. You know, people like Jacobs now because he beat Peter Quillen in one round. And he should get credit for beating him because everybody else had a hard time against Peter Quillen. Even though Peter Quillen didn't look impressive in certain fights, Jacobs was in was the only one in there to go in there and knock him out in one round. Okay, so you got to give Jacobs his props for that because Quillen was undefeated. And everybody else gave Quillen a tough fight, you know, or, or Quillen gave them a tough fight. He didn't give Jacobs a tough fight. All right, so definitely got to get Jacobs up there. J Jacobs is definitely one of the guys up there. He's definitely one of the most dangerous. If he could beat Saunders, I really don't know if he could beat Saunders. But I think Jacobs could beat a lot of the guys that Peter Quillen beat, you know? I mean, not Peter Quillen beat, uh, uh, Gennady Golovkin. I don't think he could beat Golovkin. But, you know, I just think people need to keep it fair and be use, be a little bit more rational with their opinions or or you know you know what everybody has an opinion it is what it is you know and everybody goes for who who they like the best but that guy shouldn't have been getting that kind of backlash when everybody else in the game is pretty much doing the thing the same thing the guy is telling you i can't beat him i'm not ready to fight that guy yet now as a champion yeah it's kind of corny but they're all doing the same thing this is why they're having two, three, four voluntaries before they get in the ring with the mandatory. A lot of these fighters are doing the same thing. So we can't really judge Saunders based on what everybody else is doing in every other division. All right? Why don't Broner go and fight Terrence Crawford? You know, why don't Kell Brook go and fight Timothy Bradley when, when they had a WBL or, or, or whoever, you know? Why don't he do that? Why is he fighting... I forgot who's the next guy, uh, Kell Brook. Who's the next guy Kell Brook is fighting? I can't remember his name. Kell Brook is fighting someone that Jojo, Jojo Dan beat twice. Nobody wants to see that. Who has who has Kell Brook fought since he beat Sean Porter? Why is there no backlash for Kell Brook? He's not fighting no one. You know? Why don't he fight Keith Thurman? You know, I mean... You could say this in every single division, man. The same thing, same goes on in every single division. All right. Um, so anyway, um, I'm 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 getting tired of talking about this. Uh, but you know, this middleweight division talk is 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 some of the some of the worst boxing talk right now. It's just this whole this whole thing is is getting out of control. All right. Um, at this point, I don't care what Saunders do. If Saunders don't think he's good enough to beat Golovkin, it is what it is, you know. And, and unfortunately for Golovkin, Golovkin is too passive. He's too nice when it comes to these things. I don't. I don't know. You know. I don't know what's gonna happen with Canelo. I don't even think Canelo's gonna face him. You know, Saunders is probably gonna do his own thing. I don't expect him to fight Golovkin either. Uh, and Jacobs, I don't know what's up with him. I don't know if he's cool with just being a WBA regular champion. I guess he is cool with just being that. You know, Saunders, they'll probably fight before either one of fight. Saunders and Jacobs will probably end up fighting before either one of either one of them fight Golovkin. All right. So anyway, um, I just had to put that out there. I had to make a video on it, you know. And um, that's it, man. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.